Anna sent me a question, which I've got here. Would you like to... Don't uh, share screen just yet, no, but I'm, I'm just on. going to... So, Diane um, saw our post on embellishments. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like some info on soldering items other than granulation. I watch on YouTube. Um, I have a silver lizard that I would like to solder a, a copper monstera leaf without the solder running into the texture and valleys of the valleys of the leaf. I've sanded the lizard flat on the back and formed it to the curves of the leaf. I'm wondering if I should sweat solder the bottom of the lizard. I don't want the solder to flow onto the leaf's texture and ruin the piece. I should have made the leaf in silver, but here we are. Wow, okay. that's really cool. I love it. Wow. All righty. So, <clears throat> so we are. I think you're right in saying about the, the, the sweat soldering, perfect. So what you want to do, you've got your, uh, I'm gonna be very embarrassed, very embarrassing, I'm gonna try and draw a lizard. <laughs> That's my lizard, all right? That's the top of the lizard. It's been run over. It has been a bit, and there, here's my, ooh, my leaf, yeah. Like that. So this, so, and then you've got your little um, um, your grooves, your little valleys by here. So what I would do is exactly what you said, but I would put a little bit more solder on than just on one point. I would perhaps put some solder here, sweat some solder here, and perhaps sweat some solder here. And the tail's quite thin, so I would try and sweat some solder on the back end of the tail. So when you uh, you warm this up, you flux it, you warm it up, you let the solder flow into these areas here, let the solder flow, you can perhaps get your, your solder pick, just tease it out and then on the tail, okay? Then what you do, you would then put it in the acid, you pickle it, you bring it back out, you flux the bottom of the lizard, you flux the leaf, you turn the lizard upside down, so it's all the right way around, so the two flux surfaces and the solder is in the middle, and then you just heat up the leaf. I wouldn't try and heat up the lizard, <coughs> I would heat up the leaf. Now, because what I always say is that the solder always likes to be between two surfaces. It will always stay between two surfaces because of capillary action. The solder will not venture out on its own. Okay, so heat up perhaps from underneath the leaf and then the heat will be transferred from the leaf through to the lizard. Now, obviously all this solder is on the underneath of it between the lizard and the leaf. And then as the heat is transferred from the leaf through to the lizard, when the temperature is right for the solder to flow, the solder will just flow. It will stay underneath the lizard. It should not go out past the lizard because the solder likes to stay between two surfaces. What if, the, what if it's at a point where it's not in contact with the leaf? I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I think I wouldn't worry too much about, about the, the, the legs. I think if this lizard is, is flat and the leaf is flat and providing this flux underneath the solder should sort of flow to the extremities as you do it. I'd solder on the tail here because that may catch the others, the arms and the, the, the head seem to be fine. So but the, Diane said I was planning on sweat soldering everywhere it touches. You can do it. I, what I, would, I, would, I would limit the amount of solder. So again, I would just put the solder here and then as the solder melts, just perhaps drag a little bit out into these areas. A little bit of solder here, drag the solder when it's molten into these areas. I wouldn't want to cover the whole lizard. It's going to be too much solder. Just do those little extremi just sort of extremities because if the feet are in contact with the leaf, the solder will flow. You try and cover that lizard in one go with all solder, there's gonna to be too much solder and then you may have a chance of the, the, uh, the weight of the lizard pushing down the solder and forcing the solder out. You don't want that to happen. So limit the amount of solder that is there and it should just flow and stay underneath the lizard without moving out onto the leaf. The solder likes to stay between two surfaces. So you wouldn't bother, like you could just put some pencil, like a little bit of graphite. Yeah. You wouldn't bother doing that. 
You could. That works quite well. Yeah, you could. Where the position of your lizard is, as Louise said, get um, like a four B pencil or a six B pencil, a really soft one, and just draw around. It's like a crime scene now. The, sh the shape, <laughs> the shape of the lizard <laughs> that looks like that. So the solder will not flow. It will not cross the lead from that pencil. You can try things like Tipex, yellow ochre, but then those Probably tend to be dirty. You shouldn't heat up Tipex, though, should you? No, not really. You shouldn't mm. breathe in the fumes. But it usually stains the metal. But like pencil lead around the outside will stop the solder flowing outwards. But if you don't use a lot of solder, it shouldn't, and it should be fine. Mm.